So the Red Rangers have a lot more energy than the White Cornish Crossbirds. The White Cornish Crossbirds grow out and grow out to a four pound carcass, four and a half, five pound carcass in eight weeks and uh, are big, dumb, slow birds. The Red Rangers take 12 weeks to get that same mature weight, uh, but have a lot more energy. And with that more energy comes better foraging, a different kind of meat quality, and uh, they burn up more calories. And they're just more vivacious creatures. Hey there, I'm John Siskovich. I have chicks in the brooder right here. I'm gonna open it up, feed them and water them, give them a little uh, morning comfort. And then today's the big move. They're gonna move from the brooder out into the field. This, this batch is actually a little past due with moving outside. So what I'm gonna do, get them all set in here, comfortable, finish setting up their outside area, which I'll walk you through my process, and then move them from here out to the field. They're gonna be on grass for the rest of their lives. Not only do the chicks have space in here, but you notice that doorway in the back? Boom. I got a little ramp outside. Goes out to an outdoor chicken tractor. So they're already used to the chicken tractor environment before they even get there out in the field. I open that up about week one after I know the birds can get back up the ramp and they have access indoors, outdoors. It's fun in the morning when you uh, open the door and they all come stampeding out. I want to show you some of the lean organization that we've done here on farm. We have these sheets. You can hear the chicks behind me. Uh, we're, this is the inside of the door to our brooder. And what we have here is the timeline of when the chicks, what's happening with the chicks from week one to week eight. Uh, how to set up the brooder properly. A drawing of the brooder with all the different items that you're going to want to have on it highlighted. Uh, how hot do the chicks need to be as we're raising them? We have heat lamps. Uh, depending on the time of year, we have certain windows open or one, two, or three heat lamps on. You know, that could be very subjective. So to know exactly how hot the chicks need to be, we have a temperature chart. And then with the heat lamps, you can raise them and lower them, and you can have them too high or too low, and you see that visually where the chicks are scattered beneath that heat beam. We have a chart that shows you exactly what is the right thing to do, what is the wrong thing to do, and how to fix it. All that inside of our brooder and all of these sheets in the pastured poultry packet sold on farmmarketingsolutions.com. Now these birds are set for the time being, I'm gonna go out into the field and set up their chicken tractors. First, I'm gonna have to set up the area of the field. Let's just hop over there and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So I wanna move these Red Rangers out to pasture and here's what I have going on behind me. So behind me was where batch one for the season ended up. And where they ended up, I still have like 100 feet or so left in this field. With batch two, the Red Rangers, I'm doing 120 birds versus 240 birds. That means four chicken tractors. Behind me there are eight. 
there's enough for eight to go down. So if there's enough for eight to go down, there's an, certainly enough for four to go down and then back again without crossing the same ground twice. That's the trick here. We don't want to cross the same ground twice. One, because the old poop may not have fully worked into the soil. And two, the ground can only take so much nitrogen in a year and there's a lot of nitrogen in chicken manure. So just having one pass a year is my general rule. Um, you know, sometimes two happens, but it's like beginning and end of season versus right on top of each other. So what I'm gonna do is clean up for these chicken tractors uh, prep this area of the field, which we'll talk about in a second, and uh, get them ready for moving the rangers out. So I don't know if you can tell on camera, but behind me right here, the grass is longer. It's like, you know, 18 inches tall, and those red rangers are six to eight inches tall. That's too tall for those birds. Now, I'm gonna go through and mow ahead of time. I could not mow ahead of time, but I have a very efficient brush hog on my very efficient tractor, and I'll be able to mow this patch in no time flat. They'll still get all the grass clippings, which is just the beginning of hay, if you think about it, uh, and they'll get the young grass in, between, um, in front of it, uh, where I had previously mowed. So they'll have fresh tender grass when they first get on, They'll have the what's left over from being clipped and the clippings going forward, and then as that grass rejuvenates, as they start to make that turn around the bottom of the field, uh, then they'll have all that fresh grass too. So, I have, you know, I have no no wanting desire for any more grass. I have a ton of grass. Uh, this is one of those times where I got to clip it in order to prep the field for those broilers. While I'm mowing that grass, I wanted to tell you about books to get you started raising chickens. If you want to build your chicken tractor, this is a step-by-step -step guide on exactly how you build it, what materials to get, and what the plans and dimensions are to build your very own stress-free chicken tractor. Bam! And then, before you build it, before you put chickens in it, how about determining whether or not it's going to be profitable or viable for you and your family or you and your customers? You don't want to go backwards financially trying to raise your own chickens. I mean, maybe you will year one, but that's, you know, comes with the territory. This booklet helps walk you through, hold your hand a little bit, step by step exactly what it's going to cost you to raise a chicken and what it's going to cost and what it's going to take to get started in pastured poultry. Bam. For both of these, you'll want to go to farmmarketingsolutions.com. Check out our store. They're both available on there. And uh, back to the video. Now that I finished mowing, I have to just move the four chicken tractors off the old poo and you know with plenty of space so you can work in front and behind it without getting you know a little cross contamination. And I'm um, ready to move birds out. Some quick notes on mowing the grass ahead of the birds. Yes, I would love to have cows or sheep or goats to do it for me and not use you know burning dinosaurs, but uh, that's what I got. Is it going to be even the entire time that they're on it? No. Is it a perfect thing? No. Am I trying to make the birds happy as possible within the confines of my own schedule, workload, and resources? Yes, absolutely. So, you know, you make compromises, you do what you can. Nobody's system is gonna be perfect, especially the first couple years. Mine's still not perfect and I'm five years in. But, doing really well, growing some really healthy, consistently sized, good product birds for people. They're loving it, I'm loving it, and hey, life is good. One of the other things I'm gonna do with these chicken tractors behind me is move four of them forward so they're on fresh ground. Before I do that, I'm gonna clean their feeder and their water. Ain't nobody wanna drink, I don't know, dirty feeder and water. So, like, Do you use used dirty plates when you eat your food? You don't wanna do that for your livestock either. In order to combat disease, especially in this system where it's a little bit more open while birds are coming and going, you wanna eliminate whatever factors you can. For your birds, you always wanna have fresh, clean feed and water, and that means feeders and waterers as well, because like I said, not gonna eat off no dirty plate. So the Red Rangers have a lot more energy than the white Cornish crossbirds. The white Cornish crossbirds grow out and grow out to a four pound carcass, four and a half, five pound carcass in eight weeks. 
and uh, our big dumb slow birds. The Red Rangers take 12 weeks to get that same mature weight, uh, but have a lot more energy. And with that more energy comes better foraging and different kind of meat quality, and uh, they burn up more calories, and they're just more vivacious creatures. So with that, I want to make the extra effort to handle them appropriately. And this is good whether whatever breed you are uh, are raising, but moving the birds out at night. And since I'm moving the birds out at night, you're not really going to see the process. I want these birds all to come into the coop because they have an outdoor run, and then I'm going to package them up nice and quietly with a red light on my head. And uh, yeah, that's hard to capture on camera. But I have good news. But I have good news. Justin Rhodes came over. He has a very successful YouTube channel. And he's amazing, and his family is amazing, and they came over on their Great American Farm Tour, and they were here, the first batch, the batch of chickens that came out of these chicken tractors that I now have new birds going into. He was here, he had drone footage, and he's captured the whole process, setting it up to start to finish, getting the birds out on the pasture. So I have a link, boom, going up. <laughs> I don't know what that noise was. Uh, link going up with a playlist of the three videos that featured me, Camps Road Farm, and my wife, Kate, uh, moving chickens out on pasture with the Rhodes family. We had a lot of fun. It was excellent to have them as uh, another set of hands on farm. It's so nice when community comes together and makes farming happen happening. And I just want to give a nod to Justin and his video quality uh, that, you know, that playlist, there it is again. Uh, you can go there and see me moving birds out on pasture. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. I had a lot of fun putting it together. And until, oh yeah, ooh, uh, questions? in the comment section below. And until next time, I will see you out in the field. Mm.